What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of The Other Side of the Firewall, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Times. What's up? What's up? And LeVon Maynard. Hey, welcome to the show. What is going on? So uh, very diverse week. So if you tune into um, Monday's episode, we talk about a DDoS attack in another country affecting uh, their version of Google. Um, today, Levine's gonna break down uh, a pretty cool story. And then Wednesday, uh, because I just got done traveling, we're gonna give you some cybersecurity tips for when you travel, both uh, overseas uh, and stateside. And then Friday, you know, we do our, our, our normal rundown where we talk about everything but cybersecurity. Unless my studying, but we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> but without further ado, I give it to you, Levine. Yes, sir. So it looks like we've got a story today. This is from uh, Threat Post. ThreatPost.com. Uh, this is from Elizabeth uh, Montalbano. I think I've seen some of her articles before, but she had an article today about stolen credentials uh, uh, led to data theft at United Nations. Um, so in this article, basically, uh, we have here some, uh, some threat act actors access the um, organization's proprietary project management software called Omoja, U-M-O-J-A. In, in April and access, uh, accessing the network and stealing info that can be used in further attacks. Um, so essentially somebody was able to access the credentials of one of the, the UN uh, uh, employees or UN, uh, um, you know, uh, one of the people that work for the UN uh, and they actually use those credentials to actually access, you know, the internal network of the United Nations and able to like basically get into the facility and basically uh, laterally move across the, the network and access the devices. Um, I think I, I was reading through the article here um, that they, uh, during the breach, you know, they, they got, got into some of the information. Um, it doesn't really specify exactly, you know, what they, they stole or what, what kind of data they infiltrated. Um, but they, they mentioned that this was very similar to, uh, you know, another high profile attack in January of 2020, where they had a, uh, some malware uh, took aim at the UN and, and, uh, and a phishing scam. They, they were able to steal, uh, you know, still almost, uh, I guess, over like 400, 400 gigabytes of sensitive data. Um, but the fact that somebody's credentials got leaked which I feel is like always a, a big thing. I mean, your, your security is only as strong as your, like your weakest link. So when you have somebody out there that maybe has a weak password or if they have a, you know, get, get some sort of spam email uh, from some, you know, from some no name or whatever that, that they click on a link um, and they go to some website and enter their credentials, thinking that it's the credentials they're asking for, you know, uh, some, some, of the local, some of the local site credentials and they end up getting your, your information they're able to just use that information to get right into your network and then just kind of daisy chain across the across the um the enterprise but nonetheless i mean this 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 story right here kind of goes to show um that multi-factor authentication um uh, is 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 like the way to go as far as protect, protecting your credentials um this was kind of like a simple you know simple username password attack all they had to do is get that information. They were able to get into the network and there was no like, uh, no way that I guess to prevent them from getting to what they needed to besides, uh, you know, uh, I mean, without the, without the use of this two-factor authentication, if they had a two-factor authentication in place, they would have been able to uh, prevent them from uh, getting into, you know, some of the data. Um, but nonetheless, it, it, the article goes on to um, kind of show that the, the original network access occurred April 5th. Um, and then the true activity was still detected um, as of August 7th. Um, um, but, and basically, they, like I mentioned before, they kind of used lateral movement way to get through the network. Uh, but some simple uh, security practices of establishing hierarchy of, uh, of privilege within applications on the network, given users access only to assets that they need to do the job, uh, that would have prevented them from being able to get to you know, all these different resources. You, you kind of like, you build, you, you only give access to, to the resources that the users need. You don't need to give them like, uh, like global, you know, domain admin uh, rights to your whole infrastructure so that, you know, once they have one, they have pretty much have the keys to the kingdom. As soon as the attacker gets that, that username and password, they can access every system in your network. But um, 
just trying to use that 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 limited access, uh, you know, just to the assets that they need is is a great way to prevent this kind of uh, this kind of thing from happening. Um, but yeah, it's a, it was a it's an interesting article. I mean, it's it's you know it's pretty straightforward. I mean, hey, you know, they got into the UN uh, UN's network using username and password. It doesn't really describe exactly how that information got leaked, uh, but I imagine it's probably something simple um, that you know perhaps they just like. Like I described earlier, maybe they just hit like a spam email, or uh, uh, maybe it was like a simple like like weak password. A lot of times, people just use weak passwords, something easy for them to remember. They use it on some other website. They could have had a uh, uh, the same password used on another account that they they have, and then that that account got compromised, and then they have access to that password. And they just and a lot of attackers would use the password that they find from one account and try to discover what other accounts you may have and use that same password. And a lot of times, they can kind of just get into that that you know if, you, if they have your email account your gmail account password and they discover that then they can try to use your same kind of uh login credentials for another website maybe like a i don't know uh, uh you can go to like some amazon.com and enter, enter in your gmail account you know uh your gmail uh, uh email address and then use the same password to potentially get into that account and that could have happened in this situation where they had the same like I don't know, credentials stacked for their for the un access portal for this um for this uh project management software um and they were just able to use that information to uh, just to get into the network so you know it, we talked about it before a lot of these companies kind of keep it a little little hush hush on how these attacks like specifically happen but um you know we know at the very least that it was a password um that got leaked and uh, you know, hopefully they they do some maybe in-house training for some of their the workforce and make sure they're using the correct practices as well as enabling like two-factor authentication, multi-factor authentication to uh, just kind of get that extra step, extra layer, layer of uh, security between uh, them and the uh, and, and this uh, so-called hacker, because um, uh, this is like the easiest way of, of you know affecting affecting a business. I mean, uh, hacking a business. I I think I talked to you guys about it before, but I feel like. A lot of the data breaches we see nowadays, I feel like probably the most majority of them, and I'm just going off the off the cuff, I don't really know for sure, but I, I feel like the majority of them are just people that find like a, a weak password or the, they get uh, tricked by some spam email and they click on it and they, and they, they, they download some software and gets into the network uh, more so than the, 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 the weak like, um, you know, security vulnerabilities that are out there. Um, though I, I will say that definitely, if companies aren't updating the software and the security uh, in their environment, obviously that's a that's a big. I'm sure that's a, that's up there as far as uh, reasons for data breaches as well. But uh, uh, like I said earlier in the in, the, in this, this segment, that um, you're only as strong as your weakest link, and so we just got to make sure we have uh, everything, uh, all the ducks in a row for our companies, and make sure we're, we're training and educating our employees. Um, but with that, um, you have some thoughts on that as well, Ryan. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, uh, I, I definitely went. Uh, with assigning this one to you because you you are always <laughs> champ championing the uh, two-factor right. and multi-factor authentication so i was like he, he will bring it home right uh, <laughs> so i, I always have, I, I have yeah i have my beef with it but it's not because it's not secure it's just because right. i'm lazy so <laughs> right right <laughs> it hey. forces me to do things <laughs> I can't but it, it always it always saves my butt though like uh, i think we talked about it last week where, with my sony account seem to have uh, been accessed from a different state. So I had to turn on the, the two factor. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. The, the first couple uh, times you, you log into something, is, it is a little annoying, but in the future, uh, then, you know I mean? I'll, I'll get that text or that that uh, that SMS or whatever, like, hey, did you wanna, uh, you're trying to update your, uh, your password? I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm <laughs> right. not trying to update my password. Right. So it, it does work out um, in this case. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's kind of, this, this one's kind of textbook. I think this one could be used, like if you're writing a research paper for your, uh, in, in your cyber uh, degree, this would be a good one because it covers IAM. So identity access management. Uh, I would say that was poor here because uh, he was able to use those credentials. He or she was able to use those credentials to do a lot of work. Um, and then also advanced persistent threats. So your APT. So if you're in my network from April to August, <laughs> and you're able to pull that much data who is watching so obviously there there's some issues there because um why is this person with their credentials pulling so much data where is it going like and am i watching my uh my network to see what information is being exfiltrated and uh why 
So, you know what I mean? Like there was no challenge here until several months later. Um, that, that's just no, no bueno, right? Uh, <laughs> like uh, people get in your network, it does happen, uh, but it's about diminishing the amount of time they're there. So like you have people now learning how to be threat hunters to get people out of the network sooner. So obviously they don't have those type of people in this, this organization um, or, and they just don't have any automated um, systems that are, that are tracking. Like something should have flagged. You should have had a, a, a solar winds or what's up gold or something should have been like, Hey, somebody, somebody's in here doing damage. They're taking stuff. And why, why is this person logging in uh, when they're not here at work or over the weekend or, you know, whatever their schedule is, it's this, this, this person or multiple times, like maybe they're logged in twice. <laughs> from two different places like what is happening right um so it, it's pretty textbook case like this is the type of stuff you should be definitely uh looking into as um a student of cyber uh as well as when you get that job these are things these are the holes you should be trying to patch so but i want i want to take all the good stuff I, i'll give it to shannon so i'll tell you something i it, like until Levon got to the end of his segment, I was going to jump on him because I was like, wait a minute, multi-factor is your thing. And you ain't hitting it hard enough. You ain't hitting it hard enough. Like, I, like when I read it and I saw you assigned it, I was like, oh yeah. I was like, this is, this, this is Levon's joint right here, man. Right, right. But, and, and, and here's the thing. Here's, here's what kind of stood out to me, right? Was um, why was multi-factor an option? Like whoever, whoever the cyber person is there, whoever the CIO, I don't know what the positions are in the United Nations, right? But it shouldn't even be an option for somebody to want to have to activate multi-factor, right? The multi-factor authentication. That should be something that's mandatory if you're going to be using passwords. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, this is just, this is just a poor practice for an organization that just seems like they should really know better you know what i mean because the united nations i mean they run the risk of pissing people off you know what i mean it's not like they're i I realize they have a peacekeeping mission right but not everybody thinks you're coming in there and keeping the peace right Mm -hmm. um and again i say i say they as in the united nations is is an entity all to themselves but no they are a conglomerate of several nations right but still like this was one of those things you you can't you can't be doing this stuff like like just username and password with no real security on it you know what i mean they're not doing they're definitely not doing any audit management or they would have caught them like you said ryan they would have caught them in there at all crazy hours you know what i mean uh or logged on uh from two different places like somebody should have seen that if they were in there looking you know what i mean no separation of duties because it mentioned in the article about how they had access to all these different things and whatnot right like i i figure whoever's credential they had it wouldn't, it shouldn't be somebody that can just access everything, right? Like if they're a finance person, they shouldn't be looking at, you know what I mean? Uh, 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 what do you call them? Uh, <laughs> extraction plans or something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, right. I, I, I don't know, man. This is just, this was, this was bad all around. It's not a good look <laughs> for the UN. You know what I mean? So hopefully they do something, they do something different from this. I don't think there's going to be anything. I don't think there's going to be anything they'll exfiltrate that will, that will be of any real harm because again, the UN's mission is peacekeeping, right? So it's not like they're making plans to go into Iran and and start, you know, <laughs> overclocking reactors or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, but yeah, this was this was. But you brought it on home at the end there, Levon. Like you, you hit the multi factor <laughs> yeah. hard. So. Right, right. Yeah, I appreciate that. I try to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to like uh, like overemphasize it because you know I already already uh, mentioned on many episodes uh, before this. But <laughs> gotta be consistent. Stick stick to it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so yeah. So everybody in America is using two factor authentication. I'm gonna keep, <laughs> keep yelling from the from the mountaintops. But yeah, no, this uh, two factor authentication is, is the business. I use it on everything that I see that has an option for it. I just enable it right away. It doesn't. I don't even like think about it. Um, and then like you. Uh, and I know how you mentioned before, Ryan, how you get you kind of get annoyed by having to re-enter your stuff. But most websites, even if they have two-factor authentication, you can enable it to like save your cookies for like the next visit. So you don't have to enter your two-factor, right. you don't have to verify two-factor every time you go to a website, just like your kind of your first initial visit visit. And then if some random computer on the internet tries to connect to your uh, user account, um, that's you know, obviously doesn't have your cookies, uh, it's gonna have to uh, get prompted for that second factor. So you know, it's not like it's not as troublesome as I think people may kind of lead on. Uh, maybe it's like troublesome the first time, uh, but also, I mean, it may it may particularly may potentially come up again when the cookie expires. Uh, 
Right. But uh, depending on how long they set it for the website, it may be, you know, maybe a week, maybe, you know, a month or something. But uh, uh, I think it's a, a very, very well worth the hassle to save you uh, from getting your, your account hacked. Because all somebody has to do is just figure out, you know, your password from that point, just like in this UN situation, you know, it didn't take anything besides a username and password. And those things are like, you know, they, uh, they keep databases full of username and passwords that they, they've cracked on, right. you know, these uh, dark web websites. Uh, so that extra two-factor authentication will go a long way from protecting by in, in protecting your, your, um, your accounts. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, 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 because I don't really have a problem with it. I just like poke fun at it. Uh, yeah, yeah. But the, the the most annoying was I was doing. Um, I forget what the, what what was it. Something required me to use Google Authenticator, and I worked in a building where I could not bring in my phone. Yeah. So anytime I need to use it, I would have to sprint out to my uh to the to the car to then get the Authenticator number and then sprint back in the in the uh, building. And if anything mm-hmm. slowed me down. As it started the process over again. <laughs> right, right. See, the that's your first but, mistake right there. You shouldn't yeah. be using Google at work anyway. You should be doing your work. What are you doing trying to <laughs> get on your Google account? Not joking. <laughs> I forget what I was I forget what I was doing. But yeah, yeah. I had to do the sprint. Same thing with right. teams. Remember, remember teams? Yeah. Uh, I used to time out. You were mm-hmm. like, yo. Uh, <laughs> and it was some it was some odd hour too, which was good for security, but it was like 16 hours and we're gonna uh you have to re-authenticate. And I was just like. So some days I don't have to, other days I do have to. Right. So it's always a, a, a hot mess. You go, yeah. You go log in and you have to go run out to the car. But yeah. Uh, it, all in all, though, I mean, it has saved my butt a couple of times. So I cannot, I cannot disagree with that. And whenever I do remember to go and uh, enable it, I do like most sites just give it to you up front now. But there's some 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 old accounts where they've they've enabled it but you have not gone in and clicked the box. Right. You got to dig for it a little bit. Yeah. But, but it's all good. So that's why I definitely gave it to you. Um, So good, great discussion. And it definitely, um, uh, this is episode 102. I meant to uh, have us reintroduce ourselves in 101. I did not uh, just Mm. for the simple fact that we all have different wheelhouses. Right. So like you can just see in this conversation, like all of us have different, IT backgrounds and we all harp on different things that we're passionate about. Uh, but one of these upcoming episodes, so maybe next week, uh, we'll, we'll dig into kind of like our, our backgrounds because, you know, cyber is so broad. Everybody thinks we're all doing the same thing. We really don't like we couldn't be more different <laughs> in, in, uh, in our in our uh, career uh, paths. So we'll definitely get into that. But you got a little taste of it now, people. So tune in next week. <laughs> and we'll break down uh, what we all do for a living. Uh, but yeah, uh, definitely a great conversation. It's always, uh, it's always good talking to you guys. Uh, thank you, Levon. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you to all those who are listening. Uh, we're over the 100 hump. Uh, we haven't quite hit a year yet, but we, we are definitely, uh, out here making, making episodes, uh, tune in for the next episode. I think it'd be really good for those of you who do do some traveling. Now that things are starting to open back up, uh, just for the, what you should be looking at from a cybersecurity perspective. And we all have our own opinions about that as well. And then Friday, tune in for the, uh, the rundown where we talk about everything but cybersecurity. So hit up the website, www.theothersideofthefirewall.com. Hit me up personally. I'm at RyRy Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy. I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Clubhouse, Twitter, and TikTok. And you, LeVon? Yeah, you can hit me up on the Twitters at LeVon Maynard. There it is. So stay safe, stay secure. Take care.